Game 5 of the opponent's perspective in the eyes of our opponent in preparation for the next major section tournament coming up in a month's time. So we play as white in this game. So the key takeaways, um, one key takeaway as a positive is the opening manoeuvres almost very stalwart in terms of keeping a nice steady defense counter attack ability so very happy with the position in the early part of the game and just basically keeping it nice and equal giving the opponent things to think about looking for the simple exchanges with the queen capturing at this moment in time and looking to attack giving them something to think about feeling fairly comfortable with this position going for the rook exchange the knight comes down so in essence everything looks fairly sweet at this moment fairly comfortable not wanting to overextend in any way wasn't really wanting to actually take the rook i'm thinking maybe we can keep the tension here so bring the bishop through safe haven knight comes down to attack the bishop and at this point thinking right do we win some tempo or can we move the bishop back can we move it here but the knight's going to take opens the pawns so kind of feels a little bit like the bishop is in a little bit of a trappy situation so it looks like we're going to have to exchange some type of piece off and we might not be too comfortable may need to bring the bishop here and attack the knight this way um, but then at this point I think didn't get impatient but I thought well let's just take this rook off the board but in the back of my head once I'd taken the port rook off the board I realised that this pawn in its own right is being supported by our knight I had a panic on thinking this knight was actually on it but then realised it wasn't but then realised I'm not going to be in the best position after the exchange so once they take then I'm looking to exchange takes then the knight is going to be going backwards and their pieces look a little bit more favourable in terms of attacking position so we went for it anyway and I don't think we should have done that maybe just a nice steady because the pawn isn't being attacked at the minute regroup the knights maybe attacking the bishop or bringing the knight back around again just to do something i mean attacking the bishop it gives it a whole scope of things to do let's see what that looks like and it's not happy with it but i suppose the bishop can come back here and the d2 one just bringing the knight trying to get it back into life not going there because the knight's there maybe there's potential attacks on the bishop this way with the bishop because we've got like three pieces there defending so little things like that a little bit better I've got to get used to not taking the rooks sometimes sometimes it's okay wang 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 but other times when like I've mentioned in the previous video if I get that gut feeling that it just doesn't feel like I'm going to be advantageous in it might even be the smallest of things it's just the position on the board for us after those exchanges is not as strong as we would want it to be so i should have really refrained from taking the rook got to go with that gut wrenching feel and i think that's a key lesson learned so far throughout this this latest session of training games uh, friendly training games in the eyes of the opponent the opponent's perspective and i think if you come away learning something or something to take away i think that's a massive benefit so i've got to listen to that gut-wrenching feeling of am i really comfortable with this there must be a better move that's going to make me feel more comfortable so we grabbed the pawn and uh, grabbed the rook sorry and then we went for the exchanges following through with the process and rook c1 seems to be the better one although in my head i'm thinking well what is it really attacking is it doing anything 
suppose the bishop can come here and sit here is it really doing anything so i don't really see the full benefits of that and the knight maybe coming here or something so I'll, i probably wouldn't do that maybe bring the king here but then the bishop can just put a check on it so it's not going to be that so on the whole we'll go with and the capture we capture it's only minus 0 0.3 so it's nothing that i need to be really really so worried about but for me it's the small detail in terms of the position on the board they look a little bit more lively their position looks more in an attack position already my pieces really aren't kind of working together as best as they could but it is only minus 0 0.3 So they start bringing the knight down and we capture the pawn is there anything the knight sorry is there anything better because we didn't need to take that he's attacking our bishop could go to b8 attacking the pawn excuse me could go there attacking the pawn conscious he's attacking our pawn so probably why we didn't do that they take we take support in this pawn so again it's not it's not too bad because we did think of doing this move in all seriousness we did think of doing that but i was thinking we're losing out more somehow i'd created this fictitious type advantage for them because my pieces didn't look like they were working together but i did really sit for a bit and just think about that one might have been a fleeting thought but yeah i did think that but then obviously they can just move it and then what, what's the bishop doing then? It's defending, it's stopping this pawn, but this pawn is defended by the knight so it could still push down. So it didn't feel too good, but... Um... So we took the knight off the board, it's back again to this minus 0 0.3. Nothing really to worry too much about, but then it's down to minus 0 0.5. So they're slowly building up the tiniest of advantage and that's through the opponent's perspective that's all they need you know to keep the momentum going as you can see they've got three pawns now pawn majority on this side and we've got an isolated pawn in the center here so we bring the bishop back i did think that that was not the right move and i was searching in my brain thinking this is probably better uh, computers agreeing with me there this is probably better it's not light in the world of light but it's uh, it felt like it should have been better but i thought well let's just keep it safe and just bring it here give the king some company but in reality they've got a poor majority on this side we've got an isolated pawn maybe acting the bishop as a pawn is going to be the defender so that's really nice key lesson learned there in terms of position play and yeah just keep focusing on what is going to be the problem later on in the game because in this end game these are the problem and we kind of stayed away from them with i think in my brain i'm thinking well if he moves this pawn then we're going to take this pawn at the back eventually so keeping this diagonal is going to work for us but really, I think bringing the bishop across would have been better. So it's given them now minus 0 0.8 from the incorrect manoeuvres of my pieces in terms of position on the board. And we developed the knight up, looking to maybe support the pawn here. But I don't think that was needed. And it's basically saying attack the pawn with the d5, which is really nice. Nice and simple. And throughout the moves in the back of my head that was one of them obviously attacking the knight was one of them as well and what did i think if i was attacked i'm thinking oh they're just going to push past you know and then start working their poor majority against us this bishop's already protecting this area so where is this pawn going it's not going to go any further but d5 seems to be the move obviously c5 like we said just pushing so what is this pawn doing is it stopping the king from moving further down got f4 coming 
So a bit of delay tactics, looking to try and improve position with the pawns, getting them higher up the board so we can put a bit of pressure on maybe some type of pawn getting promoted. Okay, I can see the logic in that. All right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I understand that, that's fine. So we brought the knight up protecting the pawn, which wasn't needed. And then they attack our knight, so then we attack their knight. Okay, so basically it's saying maneuver the king so we can start looking to maybe support the pawns coming up. Obviously the bishop is not going to be there. Right, okay, yep, fair enough. So we went and attacked the knight, should have left the pawn there. We capture, and then we capture. So at this point, thinking, well, it could be manageable. Yeah, if I played my cards right, it probably could end up being a draw. So we move the king up, move the king across, and they push down and we push up, and then we hit the king. But realistically, these pawns are going to be marching down. I'm going to get zugs wanged, and um, you know, so basically resign the game at that point. But yeah, interesting game. A few key takeaway points to um, to run with, so I'm happy with that. But the key thing for I think that at least three of two or three of the games is about that gut knowledge. Is there a better move? And there is usually a better move. If I feel that there's something not right or I'm having to overthink the position, I have to take that um, step back and say, dude, don't do that obvious move. It's going to put you in a bad position. You know it is. So just find something else to do.